Hi friends, um, uh, this is a course on risk-based engineering uh, from NPTEL and uh, this is second week. Uh, we are focusing on uh, probabilistic approach to risk and uh, reliability. Uh, I am Prabhakar B. Varde and uh, we have five modules uh, in this. So today's module will be dealing with some definition of uh, reliability, uh, availability, mean time to failure and all that, which are uh, used as an input for uh, risk and reliability modeling. Then we'll see uh, a very interesting and core component of the uh, lecture, uh, that is distribution. You know, uh, you must be aware about the probabilistic uh, statistical distribution. So this distribution are essential for risk and reliability modeling. We'll be discussing that component also. And we will be trying to uh, take some, some examples through which we have a better understanding. So let us see our, uh, uh, what is reliability, okay? So uh, reliability can be characterized in uh, different way. There, traditionally, there was a mean time to failure, you know, or mean time between failure uh, was, the, was the term used to uh, directly or indir indirectly characterize reliability of product which is coming into the market or in the production. So, uh, mean time to failure was uh, the uh, term uh, which is normally used uh, for uh, uh, mission components. Right? I would say uh, where repair is not possible. Let's take our uh, traditional electrical bulb. Once it fails, we have, we have to throw it. Uh, in fact, if you say uh, uh, our space missions, uh, many of the components we use for the mission and uh, of course, now the technology is advancing, so we use, uh, we make uh, reusable rockets also. Uh, but then traditionally it was a uh, thing, not, not like a, a process system, uh, where you repair it and again reuse it, where we maintain it and you uh, reuse it, uh, components and systems. Now second uh, uh, thing is reliability directly, you know. Um, nowadays, uh, reliability is the term which is used more to uh, talk about how long a component will work and there will not be any failure. It is called failure-free operation. Everybody is interested in failure-free operation, whether it is a car, scooter, or even cloths. Uh, so, or maybe uh, uh, even if we talk about some pump, it, uh, you know, an engineering term, heat exchanger, we want a continuous operation. Uh, there should not be an interruption. So, reliability is term associated where the, the operation is uh, uh, uninterrupted and uh, you get a good service, okay? Uh, then the next term is mean time between failure. The mean time between failure is used generally for repairable component because mean time between failure, that means there are many, uh, there are number of failures uh, from uh, that statistics, this estimate has been made. Uh, let us say a component, it is serving for X1 time and again failing, then again repair, then again, so it has got a cycle of uh, uh, operation and failure. So it, it has to be repaired every, between every failure. So mean time between failure is used for repairable components. And then the term which is used for uh, uh, reliability and availability. Availability is a very interesting term. The way we have um, reliability where we say uninterrupted operation. Availability is used for systems where uh, uh, where they should be available on demand. Then next is frequency. Uh, certain uh, events, we talk in terms of uh, frequency, like number of fire events, number of fatal accidents on the road, okay? And th this is a term very specific to uh, risk modeling. We call initiating events, you know? So you can see space system or normally mission-oriented system, laptops are repairable sort of. And then hydraulic pumps, yes, we do, do repair in their lifetime many times, okay? Or sometimes we do uh, preventive maintenance also. We, without, uh, before they fail, uh, we do preventive maintenance and we re try to reduce their uh, unavailability. And then fire or explosion or any event, undesired event. So for that, we give frequency and all, okay? So uh, these are the four terms. Now we'll see uh, mean time to failure. Mean time to failure is nothing but the failure events, their time summed up for all events and uh, average is taken. 
like you can see the model here in mean time to failure is nothing but t1 event plus t2 so, so uh, you can visualize that n number of components were put for test uh, and the, uh, for all the component and the component to fail whatever accumulated time was there uh, summation of this time divided by the uh, event uh, number okay so this gives us a mean time to failure very interesting phenomena is um, inverse of mean time to failure is failure rate and I think you all will be uh, knowing that this term will be used in risk and reliability model modeling time and again. So we got a very interesting parameter that is uh, failure rate. It could be have a unit uh, failure per hour, per year, per week, whatever. But the it, it has got a per unit time. It is the uh, you know uh, rate that we that's how we estimated. So as you can see, mean time to failure. If you see the definition, total number of failure lambda. Failure rate is lambda, in, indicated universally in our risk and reliability modeling as lambda. And the total uh, number of failure divided by accumulated time of failure. Okay, So um, we have the failure rate here. Now we, we got mean time to failure reliability. And now let us see how reliability, all of us we have seen in our previous discussion, definition of reliability that is uh, failure free operation of a system under given condition for a mission time t. So here we have RT, it is defined by uh, RT is equal to, R is a function of T is equal to exponential minus lambda T. This particular definition is applicable for exponential distribution. There is an assumption here. But it is a very elegant uh, uh, definition. It is a very elegant uh, model and uh, it is used extensively in reliability modeling. Please remember this. <coughs> and then, uh, uh, up now if we compare with other indicators like mean time to failure, mean time between failure, they are first of all they are component specific and all. Here also it can be component specific but it can it can designate for a system also. So, um, so um, he, here it provides more information and a more holistic in sense. Simply I give one example, mean time to failure if I say uh, simple statistics 2 and 8, mean time to failure will be 2 events, so it will be 5. 6 and 4, again it will be 5. You see a different distribution of times and you get the same thing. 0 and 10 again gives 5. So uh, reliability brings out the failure rate and the mission time of the component and implicitly you have to define the failure criteria also here. So that's how this definition is used now in the uh, uh, modern statistical or reliability modeling. So here uh, we get the probability of the failure. Please note that with this definition, we get the probability of failure. We do not get the instant of failure. But then in industries and all, uh, uh, if the choice is to be given, um, the management would like to have instant of failure of the component, especially the critical component which are uh, trouble uh, makers. So. Uh, for the, uh, the for that now a very modern and state of, state of the art technique has come. It is called prognostics and health management, wherein the component behavior or performance is monitored using sensors, and then you get the information about their degradation, and that in turn will tell us what is the remaining useful life of the component. Why it is important? Because it gives the time for the ma management to take action. Uh, or, uh, you know, whether to, uh, to take action today, tomorrow, next week, next month. So that is very critical, you know. But this uh, PHM technique is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, very, a very, very elegant technique and it is uh, being used now for elite uh, class of uh, laboratory or something. Uh, it has to re uh, still come to the real time plant. But in many plants, it has been used traditionally uh, like condition monitoring. So condition monitoring gives us indication of uh, what is the what is the degradation level. But it is devoid of all statistics, AI and all that, but it gives the uh, thing key what is the uh, leakage rate. But then reliability, if you want to obtain, uh, it has to be given under some condition. So let us say if component is tested in ground benign condition, where temperature, humidity, vibration, everything is monitored and you, so reliability will be different. But if it is not in a con uh, controlled environment, the same reliability. So when we give a statement of reliability, the conditions are very important that this statement is true for this particular condition. So condition form part and parcel of reliability uh, statements. The second is availability. Availability 
uh, is basically used for uh, uh, systems which are remaining dormant or standby. Okay? So if you want to start them, what is the probability that during that duration or during that instant they will be able to give proper service? Let's take for example a fire cylinder. It has been lying poised for uh, any use. But suppose uh, uh, that there is a fire event and if you are not able to start, uh, start, that means it was not available on demand. So that means it was unavailable. So in such cases for safety systems we use term availability. There are two types of availability we can discuss here. Um, you know, uh, one is called uh, the steady state availability and the uh, uh, our first we'll discuss inter, uh, interval availability and then steady state availability. Interval availability defined as what is the probability that the, com uh, that the component or system it will be available in the duration T1 to T2 and it is defined by one, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, the model is 1 upon T2 minus T1 integ uh, integration T1 to T2 uh, as a function of uh, availability as a function of T dt. So uh, here we have the, uh, this uh, interval availability. During that interval, what is the availability one can expect? Now this leads to uh, one failure, like you know availability is something as I told, it has got a repair component, it, it has got a failure component. Okay? So uh, if I have to define uh, availability in terms of repair and, uh, uh, repair and uh, uh, failure rate, then availability can be given by like uptime, that means system is working and downtime, that means system is failed and it is being repaired. So, uh, availability can be given as a, as a uh, uh, you know, by this formula, that is uptime, uptime plus downtime, that means total time, uptime divided by total time will be giving us availability. So if I do talk in terms of, because uh, normally we maintain the database in failure rate and repair rate. So availability can be estimated by 1 upon lambda divided by 1 upon lambda plus 1 upon mu. Okay, mu is nothing but repair rate, okay, <coughs> which is derived from mean time to uh, repair. Okay, so availability can be given by mu divided mu plus lambda. Conversely speaking, unavailability, which is um, more used uh, for risk modeling, uh, for, for safety system. So availability is nothing but 1 minus availability uh, uh, and it is 1 minus mu upon lambda uh, mu plus lambda. So unavailability can be given by lambda upon uh, mu plus lambda. Okay? So we got reliability, we got availability. Now uh, uh, as I said, uh, there are some other uh, parameters which are used more in probabilistic risk assessment. Uh, for component availability or on demand or whatever. So uh, these, uh, these estimates are for, so let's say, for continuously operating system, if I have to estimate the unavailability U, then we have lambda into T. That, that means failure rate into uh, time to, uh, time to uh, repair, actually, you know, or for, for its mission, actually. So also, when we, have, uh, when we have data on number of failure of a component, on demand and number of total number of demands, then this Q, uh, that is number of failure divided by total number of demand placed on the component of the system will give us unavailability. These two are independent of time. Okay, So uh, this uh, unavailability failure uh, rate and repair rate, uh, there are one, some advanced techniques called Markov modeling, where uh, we, uh, we, we analyze the unavailability in a dynamic manner. So um, repair rate, uh, failure rate takes a component from one state to another state and then repair rate brings back the component to uh, failure to uh, its original state. So this is a, uh, uh, it, is a uh, it is a closed loop system, Markov model, uh, wherein we analyze the uh, system already. We'll see when we discuss probabilistic risk assessment, how Markov models are used, where it gives dynamic unavailability for the system whatever we discussed so far was a statistic availability. Now, probability distribution, as I uh, mentioned, uh, they are very basically the core of all probabilistic modeling, especially in risk and reliability. So, uh, the probability distributions are basically developed from the core, uh, the, the raw data that are available from the plant or systems or on individual component or trials, you know. So, uh, the, uh, for so there are, if you look at them, uh, there are two types of uh, distri uh, probability distributions. One is continuous distribution 
and other one is discrete distribution where the results are available uh, from the plant or systems or trials are integer value the they, that is uh, that those situations are analyzed using uh, the discrete distribution let's say uh, we had uh, uh, we had um, n number of demand for a pump to start and how many times uh, it uh, failed so th these two are complete integer number that means suppose if it has failed twice so 2 divided by 10 10 demand two failures so 2 by 10 is a uh, is a um, discrete distribution um, you know so data is discrete so it is called discrete distribution okay uh, and that is how we estimate reliability and risk and all um, availability and all okay now the, uh, the other one is continuous distribution where the data is a in a in the in a continuum that means it is in fraction well you know so they, this type of data they are called continuous distribution where it is not in integer it is in uh, decimal as estimate so here we will be talking about first uh, uh, discrete distributions and there are two uh, distribution i feel they are very uh, they are used uh, in probabilistic modeling they are this is binomial distribution and poisson distribution okay so let us see what what is the uh, binomial distribution <coughs> binomial distribution is a basically used in scenario or in trials where how many success how many failure and that will uh, allow us to as enhance the probability of the component you know so um, let us say uh, let's take a, a scenario where let us say a fire event and uh, there are four fire pumps and if if we feel like even if two pumps start out of four pumps then we made the uh, or rather i would say if uh, two pump fail two pump fail then the system will fail uh, converse is two pump starts so it will be a success of the system so let us say probability of success let us say if you are estimating the probability of uh, success event then uh, the, the model is like this uh, the probability is a function of x that is success uh, uh, the number of trials that we uh, carried out and the success event okay uh, probability p so so if if we say two pumps is a success out of four pumps then the distribution will be fx uh, please note fx is a uh, probability density function for continuous distribution for it is uh, it will be used extensively uh, later on also so uh, fx is nothing but a uh, probability density function wherein we'll see different curves and we'll see how it is uh, characterized or graphically it is presented so here so fx f uh, is a function of x success so out of n that is four pumps if the x comes then probability of uh, success power x and probability of failure power n minus x will give us the probability of two pumps starting which is a success for my thing so success probability we can estimate here uh, isn't it uh, a very uh, uh, you can say combinatorial combination logic or co combinatorial logic we have used for modeling the uh, uh, binomial, binomial system now let us take a small example we have said probability of success is p probability of failure is q so either the component will fail or it will succeed so probability of p plus q is equal to 1 so if we have single component uh, we have two probabilities p and q and p plus q can be given as two now let us say uh, we are trying to build uh, the model for uh, binomial model for uh, uh, for this uh, discrete distribution okay so let us say uh, if we have two uh, uh, components or two shutdown devices let us say for an event or fire system to, uh, to come under control or shutting down a system which takes it to safe state let us say uh, we, we have two components to take it to the safe state then the probabilities are what combination is what both will succeed SS one will succeed one will fail the first will succeed second will fail second will fail second will uh, first one uh, uh, first one will fail second one will succeed 
and both will fail so we have four combination but now we come to we come to uh, come to this particular thing p square p square plus 2 p p q plus q square so single component we have we had this model uh, two component we have uh, another model now let us see we go to three component stage now three components are there and three components what are the permutation combination either all will come that is success or one will not come so i uh, one will fail so pqp then ssf second third one has failed then then there is a probability that two components have failed uh, again two components have failed again two components have failed again three, uh, this and then you have all the components failed so you can write the expression as pq plus 3 pq p square q plus 3 pq square plus q cube so p plus q cube so where we have arrived for suppose if we had three component if we go for n n components then the expression if we take the analogy the expression can be presented as p plus q raised to power n you can see here analogy so it will be pn plus c uh, c 1n and all and remaining qn other end we have reached so this is our expression and if i have to write this ex expression i can write it like this fx is equal to a combination of n uh, uh, x out of n then px and pn minus x p is success uh, raised to uh, their success probability okay uh, and then uh, number sorry and then q n minus x so we got this expression it isn't it uh, elegant way of uh, approaching a distribution or function for uh, binomial distribution okay so now uh, we go to the next slide now let us see poisson distribution in in binomial distribution we saw how to estimate probability when we have component uh, uh, components a combination of success or failures are required to uh, uh, give the probability of the uh, system now here uh, here we have poisson distribution wherein the events are spread over a period of interval some certain intervals are there and they are arriving at certain let's say number of trains coming at a station uh, number of defects in a pipeline and we have to create a model for that uh, so for this a poisson uh, distribution is very effective so uh, if i have to define poisson distribution probability distribution it is nothing p is a function of uh, one uh, random variable uh, capital x okay uh, and then uh, then we have failure rate lambda rate event rate rather rest to x exponential minus lambda and that gives us uh, and of course factorial x at the uh, thing numerator so uh, now based on uh, number of x and all we are able to get the probability of uh, probability of interest interesting event interested event x uh, for the, say number of defects how many defects in pipe yeah, you know all those things you know and their distribution so here we can say uh, lambda is nothing but expectation of x so expectation is a term which is used i think uh, in second or third lecture will will expectation of a particular parameter what is the uh, what is the so uh, it is a mathematical uh, it has got a mathematical condition connotation we will discuss it in the next slide um, or in next lecture so now if you go to the uh, if i have to give you overview what we have discussed here so role of probabilistic modeling and risk in risk and reliability we have started distribution we will continue uh, we have dis uh, discussed two discrete distribution uh, now we will be discussing uh, in next uh, talk continuous distribution and then uh, various indicators we have studied availability expression we have seen and major category of distribution which we uh, consider in risk and reliability modeling we have discussed and they are basically uh, um, binomial and poisson distribution okay um, one more distribution is there uh, for discrete thing it is called f distribution i have not discussed this 
probably I'll give a uh, homework on this uh, that what is F distribution and how the probability is estimated actually. It's a very popular distribution, uh, but I'm intentionally not, not discussing it. Uh, let's give it for home study actually. Thank you very much.